Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd down here at Advantage One RV with something you've probably never heard of. Um, I would estimate that because I had never heard of them. This is a Thunder by Highline. It seems to be, from the little bit I've been able to discern, it was a, a younger company that started up, I believe, just before like the 08, 09 recessionary period. And I got a feeling that they just didn't get a chance to get their feet under them before the world flipped upside down on them effectively. It's an interesting coach. It's not a bad coach. Uh, previous owners did some personalizations to it. And that's actually one of the things I think uh, really struck me about this. This really feels like a, a, a DIY or redecorators kind of floor plan right here. I'd love you to just take take a look at the space and let me know like, what do you think about it? How would you change it? It's, it's kind of a cool rig. I see what they were going for here. And I really would have been interested to see if this company would have hung around a few more years. I wonder what kind of fun stuff they could have come up with. Now the RV's not necessarily 100% original, but where they made changes, they didn't make bad ones. Like case in point, they peeled all of the carpeting out of the RV and put all new flooring down, which I think a lot of people are going to like. Um, they, uh, it looks like at some point they must have wanted something different here. They put some different steps in, and actually what's kind of cool is they built themselves their own little like flashlight tool chest kind of job down there. Looks like they upgraded to a digital thermostat, and here's the biggies. Uh, not just combo, I'm sorry. Stacked washer and dryer. So if this is something you want to, uh, like if you got permanent park hookups or something like that, where, uh, you know, you can, because cause a washer dryer unit in an RV will fill up your gray tanks very quickly. Well, if you're at a park site where you don't have to worry about that anymore, it's just not a big deal. I don't know if this is original furniture or if they rearranged it or what the case may be. We are, we must be low on power. I see the lights flickering at me. That's the CO detector. Apologies, headphone users. I did not know that was coming. But... They, they did they did some stuff here with furniture. It, the sofas match. I don't think they're the sofas that probably originally came in this RV, but that just means that they're newer. They're not bad looking by any stretch of the imagination. By the way, I've looked around all the corners. I don't see, uh, like, I don't believe the RVs had leaks or major issues or anything like that. And one of the interesting things on this floor plan, so you see there's a slide out there. Well, this big super slide is going to close to just about the kitchen counter. That means everything to the front of this, uh, effectively all of the kitchen, the bathroom and the bedroom are all travel functional. This is a fantastic fifth wheel if you want to do some cruising and tooling around. Uh, it's got a, a tri-axle, which will smooth out a lot of towing. It, a lot of people get kind of weirded out about tri-axles. They think, oh, no, that must mean it's big and giant and heavy. It's 12,600 pounds. It weighs less than a ton of fifth wheels that are produced today. But what's kind of nice here is, despite the fact that it's got a nice big living room, we got all these windows, it has a chunk of storage in it, cracking all this open right here. You see what I'm talking about? Note to that countertop extension there. And they put a uh, residential like uh, sink fixture in instead of just a common camper sink. A lot of people will do little stuff like that. Like I said, the changes... The modifications they made to the RV, they're not things that scare me. They're not things that were done really poorly or chopped up or anything like that. That, by the way, is a, uh, it is an RV oven. It, it's designed to look and feel a little more residential, but that is an RV oven. It's actually the same kind of oven you often find in like destination trailers, which I thought was kind of interesting. Sliding back upstairs here. Now, we, we kind of just peeked at this before, but again, we got the stacked washer dryer units right here. So you got a Maytag down below, then you got a GE up above. I guess it doesn't matter if they're not exactly 100% matchy-matchy. The point is that you put your, you know, matchy-matchy socks in there. Which, by the way, has anyone else ever had this happen? I took a two-day trip with my family to Cedar Point last week. Had a ball. I came back so tired I needed a break from my vacation, so I came back to work. But as we were getting packed up and ready, I grabbed three pairs of socks in case, like, I got wet feet one day and had to replace one. As we're going to pack things up, suddenly I have two pairs of socks and then one loner sock. How does that even happen? Like, what is that? Why is that a thing? And can it please not be a thing? Oh, you're getting... I'm, I'm talking to myself with my hands over here in the mirror, aren't I? Ugh. Anyway, you get the idea. Like, why is that? It doesn't make sense. 
Why is that even a thing? It shouldn't be a thing. Has anyone else had that happen where a sock just magically disappears because the flipping underpants gnomes snarfed it real fast? I don't know. 60 by 80 true queen bed. I'm, I'm just going to hard segue away from that. And that is a sleep number queen, by the way. Your little pump system is located down here. The handheld controller. Uh, there it is. It kind of slipped off that little stand. But that's a nice little thing. Give you a better night's sleep in here. Because like I said, the changes the folks made, they weren't bad ones by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think so anyway. What do you guys think? Now, overall, the exterior still looks pretty decent. It was stored outside. It was used frequently. Um, some of the decals have been a little bit Midwestern weather-kissed, sun-kissed. I think what I would do, I'd just take like a power washer or a heat gun and some goo gone or something. I'd just get rid of them. And I, you know what's funny? When you do that, when you take old decals off an RV, it looks really fresh. It looks clean by comparison. See the slide awnings up there? We'll get up on the roof in a minute so you can see everything from that point of view. Uh, down here, the triaxle. That's something I didn't talk about previously. It's going to kind of surprise some people because especially with the shorter length of this RV, you're like, really? A triaxle? Well, I think they were just going for a really hefty cargo carrying capacity, not to mention having that third axle in the mix and spreading your axles out a little bit like that really kind of smooths out uh, a lot of the towing scenario on this RV. <laughs> Impressive, oddly shaped, but impressively sized pass-through compartment. One thing I noticed over here, this is bowed up a little bit. I, I don't know if maybe the baggage door was left open at some point. Maybe it rained in there. I don't know what might have caused that. It's still pretty solid underneath all that. So I, I don't know the result or the, uh, the cause. I can just see the result. And I want to make sure you folks know about that stuff because we are family owned and operated. If you know this isn't the right RV for you, I would still like you to know that you can get straight facts and a square deal down here at Advantage One RV and not mucking around and, and glossing over and hiding things like that so that you get a nasty surprise when you get here. That's what we that's what we do. That's what we specialize in over here. Hold on. Is that okay. I saw that and I went, holy crap, is that a stress fracture or is that just like something on the decal? And it's just it's just the decal. I actually, structurally, this thing it, I guess in a house you call it good bones. This feels like a good bones kind of camper. Like it again, I'm not ultra familiar with the the, the company as a whole, but it sure seems like it was put together pretty pretty decently considering the age of the RV and the usage it's had. It's held up well. And the curvature in that rear cap back there, that actually really reminds me of a Rockwood fifth wheel from this era. I wonder if they took a couple bits of inspiration and some notes there. Uh, it looks like they uh, had a fabrication shop add a rear towing hitch on the back of this. I don't see any sort of like wiring harness stuff. It's possible I just missed it. But just a simple little four-way wiring harness is not a hard thing to add to one of these. And I did notice just now with the wind flapping a little bit, it caught my eye. The back of that slide awning right there is beginning to tatter a little bit. But given the age of the RV, if that's really the worst we have to say out here, that ain't all too bad. And I don't think there's any other way to say it. If, if you purchase this RV, one of the things I highly recommend you do is a full peel and seal of all the roof fixtures. I have not located anywhere that I've seen a leak. I've walked all over the roof. I haven't found any spots that feel like, oh, there's been water in there and it's crispy under my feet. But some of these seals, like on this rear termination strip, they need, they need some love. This RV's been stored outside. It, it could use a really good cleaning in and out and then some roof peel and sealing. And then, man, like, holy cow, you could do some serious budget full-timing in here. One other thing I want to make you aware of is I don't think this was built with 3 8 roof decking. I think it was built with 9 millimeter decking, which is a little thinner. I'm walking all over it. Um, I'm going to point the camera down. I hope I don't make you motion sick. I'm, I'm walking just normal walking. But... I can feel when I'm standing on a roof rafter, and I can feel when I'm not standing on a roof rafter. It does moonwalk bow below my 200 pound, still putting on pandemic pounds dad bod butt here. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Again, I don't think it's had a leak. I don't think it's had any issues. But it doesn't feel like a lot of fifth wheels do on the roof, and I just want to make you aware of that. So that, again, you have proper expectation set when you do come to visit us. So there you have it, guys. 
And something else I didn't really mention when we started is, with that washer dryer installed, that's one heck of a budget full timer right there. If if maybe you don't even plan on towing it, what if you don't have a vehicle? Give us a call. We got trucks. We'll get something delivered for you. We can call a third party and outsource it. Park it wherever you want. You get it hooked up, and there you go. Now it's like a destination cabin sort of kind of thing. And if you are gonna tow it. That triaxle, man, it, it'll take a lot of that front to back jumping out of this thing. I bet it tows pretty darn nice. That works for you. Give us a call. And if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you along as we go through more RVs pretty much every day when they come through. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.